believe it's your season today. Can I get you to clap your hands all over the room and open your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Come on. We're going to declare this message tonight. It's my season. It's your season of grace. Your season of joy. Your season of joy. Your season of peace. Yeah. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Come on, go get it. 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 We're gonna speak this over here. Your season of favor. Your season of favor. Your season of breakthrough. Family Ministries and welcome to another beautiful Sunday. I'm so glad you're able to join us this morning. I'm Angela Phillips and I'm here with your announcements. On Mondays at St. Paul Family Ministries, I don't forget our Iron Men's call at 8 p.m. That is for the men at 8 p.m. and the phone number and access code is on your screen. On Tuesdays, we have Stop and Pray with Sister Dee Dee at 9.30 p.m. Um, that's for everybody. That's a chance for you to call in and just pray for people who need prayer and for you to ask for specific prayer if needed so that we can know how we can pray for you. On Wednesdays, we have two Bible studies, one at 11.30 a.m. and one at 7 p.m. So you get a chance to get a double dose of Jesus. Amen. Raise a hallelujah. All right now. Um, and then every single day at noon, you have your Stop and Pray with Minister Daylon. This is where he will either go over a devotional or scriptures that he has meditated on that morning to deliver to you. And you guys are able to connect and talk about the scripture and just a day to just stop and pause and just, you know, look to the Lord and just see what he has for you. You may start off in the morning not feeling okay, but midday, you know, you're able to see why he still has you here. Amen? Amen. Another thing that we've added is for the youth. So for the youth on Fridays at 6 p.m., you will be able to call in in our Zoom call and the Zoom information is on your screen. So youth, ages 13 to 17, please join us. Um, and that way you too can feel like you are a part of everything that's going on at St. Paul Family Ministries. Church family, we also have an opportunity for you to still tithe and give. And so we are using apps like Givelify, Tithely, and PayPal. And you also can still mail in your checks to the church. All the information is on your screen. And St. Paul Family Ministries, this is the last Sunday of the month, so I wanna recognize all of the July birthdays that we have this month and just say happy birthday to you on behalf of St. Paul Family Ministries. I hope you guys celebrated safely in quarantine and that you, know, you came up with some creative ways to celebrate your day. Um, and then those of you who are in August, We'll get to you in August, but happy birthday to those July birthdays. All right, St. Paul Family Ministries, those are your announcements, but before I go, please don't forget to reach out to talk to someone by either texting them or calling them, just letting them know that you love them, you're praying for them, you're thinking of them. Um, we are still quarantining, so I want you guys to make sure you guys have your masks. When you guys go out, you guys have your gloves on, and you guys are just being very aware of, you know, how you guys are keeping your health intact. And so we want to see you again in the church house, and so we want to see you healthy. So please, please, please make sure you are doing your part in quarantining. That's it for your announcement, St. Paul Family Ministries. Enjoy the message.
in St. Paul and welcome to another Sunday service. This is a time where we come together as brothers and sisters to unite as one in prayer. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for what it represents. Another day that brings on new challenges, new lessons, and new blessings. Lord, we're so grateful that you have all the power, the power that gives life, the power that breathes the breath into our bodies so that we can see another day. Lord, we don't take it lightly that we're one of the ones that you decided to wake up this morning. You didn't have to do it, but you did, and so for that, we're grateful. Lord, we're asking you to just continue to watch over us and keep us. We're asking you to bless those that are going through different illnesses, those that may have the virus, those that may have aches and pains. Lord, I'm asking a special blessing for those that are in the hospitals and convalescent homes, those that can't have loved ones to go and visit them and see about them. They can't touch them, they can't kiss them, they can't even look at them. Lord, this is a tough time for all of us right now. Lord, I'm asking for a special blessing for those that are working with the sick, the shut-in, the elderly. Lord, give them patience. Give them long-suffering. Give them the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit that all comes from your Holy Spirit, which gives us all knowledge, all wisdom, and all power. Lord, your Holy Spirit is the gift that keeps on giving. Your Holy Spirit is in what can lead us and guide us throughout this life. So Lord, we're asking for more of you. Fill us more and more with your Holy Spirit and fill us more and more with your wisdom so we can make the right decisions. So we can treat our brothers and sisters with love and honor and with respect. Lord, I know right now we're in a time where they're talking about Black Lives Matter, but we know that the only lives that matter is our life is accepting you as our Lord and Savior. So I simply say, bless the saved lives. The saved lives are what's mattering. And even those that are unsaved that we're trying to bring into the fold. Lord, let us continue to remember the Great Commission. Where you told us to go out and Bring others to Christ. Baptizing them in the name and the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Allowing them to fear you. Not in the sense of fear and being afraid of you, but fearing you in the sense of having all respect, all honor, all glory for you. Lord, we thank you for what you did on the cross for us on that great day. On that good Friday. Where well, you hung there between two things and you didn't come down from the cross. In fact, you were innocent. You never did anything wrong. But here you find yourself between two things and you're looking down and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it didn't stop there. You decided to go ahead and give up your spirit. You said it yourself, into your hand, Father, I commit my spirit. But it didn't stop there, Lord. On the third day, you rose with all power in your hand. So, Lord, we just thank you for your power. We thank you for getting up on that great Sunday morning. We thank you that you are still trying to reconcile all of us back to you. So, Lord, as I end this prayer, I just want to say, Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In Jesus' name, thank God. God bless you. You're and God
you everyone. It's good to be here this morning, uh, another beautiful Sunday morning, and we give God all of the praise and all of the honor. And we just want to speak to you today. Let's uh, just ask, um, ask to speak to the Lord with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, you are uh, such a great and wonderful God. And Lord, we thank you for your mercy, kindness, and your love for us. Lord, we stand on your word. You're a great and powerful God. And so, Lord, we can't live this life unless we live it by your word. And so, Lord, I ask that you make us uh, strong, give us the strength that we need to navigate through this uh, world of detriment and this world of hate and all of these things that we come up against. Lord Jesus, go before us, be a buckler, be a shield uh, that guards us from all of these things. And Lord, we ask that you speak to your people in the name of your son, Jesus. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, so good to be with you another Sunday. And we're gonna be coming from the book of Ephesians. Um, a very familiar scripture, but I want to give you a thought today. Uh, after I read the scripture, I want to just give you a thought that um, maybe you haven't thought about. Uh, however, um, we should really give um, praise to God for his word, for giving us these thoughts that come from his word. Um, if you would go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And um, start at verse 10, and we're going to go 10 through 12. I'm sure you've heard this before, but I would admonish you to read the whole chapter fully to get the full understanding of uh, what Paul is saying to the Ephesians in this particular scripture. Uh, chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. And this is how it reads. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. And the title of this particular message this morning is a brave warrior for Christ, a brave warrior for Christ. And so I read this to you. Apostle Paul was writing this letter to the Ephesians and he was admonishing them to be brave in the things that they go through in, um, in, at that time. Be brave warriors, stick to your guns for fighting for the word and fighting for Christianity, fighting for the love of the Lord and, and for his love to be given to you and for you to be able to spread it to others that know nothing about who Jesus is. And I would like for you to focus on the faithfulness of a brave warrior, being faithful and so we, we reserve to give you this message. We pause to take this time and say, Lord, we love you with all of our heart, yet we do know that we have a task as Christian brothers and sisters, and that's to love the ones in the world that don't know you and offer them the way. And sometimes it's gonna be rough. Sometimes it's gonna be hard. Sometimes we're going to be up against uh, things that Satan and his demons bring forth uh, to fight us off, to hold us off, to ward us off, to back us into a corner, to make us look bad, to wreck our witness, 
to hurt God, to uh, disappoint him, to disgust God. And we are to be able to be brave warriors that won't disgust, disgust, disgust God or hurt his feelings or wreck our witness. We want to be brave warriors for Christ. We want to have the spirit of Christ, full of the spirit of Christ. We want to have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And so we give God praise and we give him honor and we glorify him and we magnify him and we lift him up because we want to be brave warriors for Christ. Ones that stand up for right. Ones that stand up for righteousness. Ones that stand up for the goodness and the grace, greatness of God and his word and his mercy and his kindness. And not only that, but but the sovereignty of God, the royalness, if you will, of God, the, the, uh, the power of, of the hand of God, the power that he has given us now that his son Jesus has rose from the grave with all power in his hands. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit, which will live in us. And so we give him praise because Three things that we must do, and that's we must be trustworthy as brave warriors. We must have temperance as brave warriors, and we must bear the truth as brave warriors. I don't know about you, but on my Christian journey, I've had times where I had to be a brave warrior, stick to the guns of what God's word has taught me and what his, his, uh, what his word and his illumination and his inspiration has did in my life and in my heart through the power of Jesus Christ. So to be a, uh, to be a brave warrior in being trustworthy, I've got to have confidence in what I believe. I've got to have faith in what I believe. And when a person is trustworthy, they're safe in the Holy Ghost. They're solid in his spirit. They're steady as they go along fighting the devil and his demons. Uh, the Bible says Re resist the devil and he'll flee from you. In other words, he has to go when you resist him, when you're resisting him, as a Christian, when you're resisting him uh, in the power of the Holy Ghost and you're rebuking the devil, telling him to get behind you, you have the power to do just that and he has to move because you're resisting him in the name of Jesus. And that's what God wants as a brave warrior for Christ. Be sure of what you're doing. Also be dependable in what you do as a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in a battle and he died for our sins to give us the power that we have. And a lot of saints don't realize they have the power to pray a prayer and pray a sinner out of their sins. And we have that power. But some people are afraid to use that power. Some people don't believe and trust that they really have that power. But Jesus said in his word, he said that I rose from the dead with all power in my hands. God has given that, given us that in his word. He's given us a, a realization of, of the dynamite power, that power that becomes an explosion of love, an explosion of goodness, an explosion of grace, an explosion of mercy, an explosion of leading those that don't know Jesus to the one that, that died and actually made everything, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all in one that makes three personalities in one person. And, and, and it, we're not... We're not polytheistic 
We don't believe in a polytheistic God because he's one God in three personalities. And so we give God praise because we're able to be, uh, we're able, enabled by God and we can rely on him because we are honest with what we do with him, the way we live with him. And so we must be trustworthy to be a brave warrior. Well, what is a brave warrior? A brave warrior is courageous. They have courage. A brave warrior is fearless. A brave warrior is gallant. A great, a brave, a, uh, a brave warrior is uh, great hearted. And then you may ask the question, well, what do you mean when you say a warrior? A warrior is a person that engages or in experiences warfare. Well, every time you wake up in the morning, you're in warfare. It's called spiritual warfare. Uh, a lot of unsaved people don't realize that they wake up in warfare. Sometimes they don't realize it because they're so engaged in the wiles of the devil. Look at the scripture. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of of the devil. Well, Pastor Sonny, what is the wiles of the devil? Well, the wiles of the devil is the warfare that you're in. Those wiles are sly things that he does. Those, those wiles are wicked things that he does. And so he gives, uh, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to be trustworthy, to pray the wiles of the devil into a, uh, into a fear that makes the devil and his demons flee from the Holy Spirit that shines inside of you because you are trustworthy. I hope that makes sense to you because God says, he says, you don't know the dunamis power that I have given you for this particular task. I know what type of life you're going to be in, what kind of world you're going to be in. When you get dip, deep into his word, we realize that we're caught between a rock and a hard place. Yes, but I understand from the word, from reading and, and, and not only teaching, but learning from the word and learning from other, uh, other ministers and other teachers that this war that we're in is already won. And that's the beauty of being trustworthy. If we can only get it in our, in our hearts and our minds and in our souls that this war is already over in God's time, which is Kairos time, and not in our time, which is chronological time. I say that to our church all of the time, but I'm talking to the world now. And so now that we are in this uh in this pestilence that we're in. We have to do it by uh, video and we have to do it by uh, YouTube and these type of things. So we have a, a bigger audience to tell the world that we're all, this war is already won. We're just in between God's time, which is Kairos, and our time, which is uh, chronological. But in the middle, this war is already won because God in his time has already conquered the devil and his demons. We get that understanding and we get that knowledge and that wisdom when we read God's word because it teaches us how to be trustworthy. It teaches us how to have temperance. And when we go to the second point of temperance, temperance means not to overdo something. That's all it means. Not to underdo something, but be even countered, knowing the Lord has the power. We don't have to push the power. We just live the power, speak the power, talk the power. 
And when we talk the power and when we speak the power, the devil has to move because we have the power that was already won on the Kairos time side. It's so simple when you believe it and you trust it. So I look at the word temperance. Yes, he said we are to be trustworthy, but he said we must, as a brave warrior, we must have temperance also. Self-discipline is what we have to have. God loves a, a righteous person, a person that has self-discipline, not to overdo things in their life, not to underdo things in their life. Some people have a habit of talking too much and they don't have any discipline not to talk. Unfortunately, people are like that. But God says, don't overdo, have some type of self-control. It is a, res a restraint over one's own impulses is what temperance is. A restraint over your impulses. What are your impulses? Sometimes we act so impulsive. Sometimes we don't think before we speak. And God says, how are we going to be able to uh, gain someone that is in the world if we're talking too much or if we have no power over our, our own emotions or our own impulses? People are watching Christians. But I'm here to tell you as Christians, you as saints, that, the word, that, that your heart should be for the world, to love the ones that are unsaved and lead to, them to Christ. Christ had a spirit, a beautiful spirit, that people loved even though they were getting fed. Yes, they loved his words. Some came because they were just getting fed, but they also loved his words. They loved him. They wanted to be around him, even if they wanted to come just to be healed. But they loved him. And that was the good thing until Satan came along and tried to conquer all of the world because he was trying his best to take away the son of the world, the son of God, the son of that actually is the father that made everything. So we have to have temperance. We have to be able to control our emotions, our self-discipline, our self-control. We have to have a restraint over the impulse of the world. Being trustworthy, being honest. Romans 12, 17, the B portion says, provide things honest in the sight of all men. And then he goes on to say, have temperance as a brave warrior. And the scripture says, Galatians 5, 23, meekness, be meek, be humble, take it everything at its own time and think about it before we act on it. Temperance, he says, against uh, he says, meekness, temperance, against such, there is no law. In other words, the good things. We should ask God for those good things. In temperance, not everything. Not the things that we don't need. Sometimes he'll bless us with the things we want. But we've got to get in the habit of asking him for the things we need and being temperate in all that we do, not asking him for more than we can handle. Sometimes he'll give it to us, the things more than we can handle, to teach us a lesson. But temperance is a big and major word that we must understand. And one of the major things that teaches us that is having the Holy Spirit. So on a daily basis, seek for the power of the Holy Ghost. God says with this power, you can navigate through this world of detriment. This time that we're living in. Oh, Proverbs 2 and 11, it says, discretion shall 
uh, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. We've got to have understanding. We've got to have temperance to have understanding. We have to have temperance to be discreet about the things that we do. So be trustworthy and then be, uh, be a brave warrior of temperance. Brave warriors must be trustworthy. Brave warriors must be and must have temperance. And then a brave warrior must bear truth. That third point, a brave warrior must bear truth. Oh, have mercy. How, is, how powerful it is to have truth. When you look at this portion of scripture, it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Let me stop right there. Those things that are up in the air. I used to wonder about the heavens when the Bible talked about the heavens. And I used to wonder about, uh, Lord, where is the heavens? Where is it? Well, there's a third heaven and there's a second heaven and there's a first heaven. And I didn't realize where the first, second or third heaven was because I truly wanted to know. Uh, but I went skydiving, not skydiving, but parasailing. I went parasailing one time. And as I was on the boat and they were pulling me with the, the big giant parachute, and, and I started to go up out of the back of the boat. And as I went up, I was hearing the water, hearing all of the, the city, which was over just a little further out, out from the water. And, as I started to go up, up, I heard all of those things. I heard my, uh, my relative down in the boat waving and hollering. And then pretty soon, everything just went silent. And the Spirit of the Lord just spoke. You're in the first heaven now, where the birds fly. We can see the birds. My cousin in the boat could see me still. And I was still up there, but I couldn't hear a thing. And, and it was surreal, and it was quiet. It was, it was sort of scary in a way. And, and when, I, when I started looking around to see things that were, uh, that were on the level that I was on, the only thing I could see was birds. And then some of them were flying up over where I was. But God just revealed to me, the surrealness of the first heaven. And then I learned in the Bible that the second heaven is where the stars are, where the moon was set, and all the millions of galaxies and stars. I couldn't see because it was dark, but I could see the brightness of God in the stars. I can see the brightness of God in the galaxies. I can see the brightness of God in the suns. In my astronomy classes, they said a lot of the stars are suns. And at night we used to look in the, in the telescopes to see how far we can see and see uh, Venus and other different uh, uh, planets. And we were looking at all of those. And the Spirit of the Lord just spoke and as I was reading his word and said, that's the second heaven. And then I, I found out that the third heaven is even above that. And I find out, found out in the word that, that the devil and his demons can go all the way up to that gate. But he can't get back in because the Lord has, has kicked him out. And so he says, when he goes up there, he says something like uh, to the Lord, I'm seeking whom I can devour. And what he meant by those things is those wiles of the devil, those powers in high places, those principalities that I'm talking about, those rulers of darkness that I'm talking about, and those spiritual hosts of wickedness. In other words, 
those demons are those fallen angels no more fallen no more angels but now demonic angels those principalities one thing I learned about those principalities they're they're levels of devils they have different uh, authorities and they try their best to keep that 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 entourage in in order and, and as big as the demon is that tries to hold back the world they want to keep that demon in place to keep the world uh, under that demon's uh, wisdom and knowledge of that authority of principalities and God says in his word that we have more power than that and we we fail to use it but I'm here to tell you this morning saints be a brave warrior for Christ because he wants us to have that particular power that we can come against the wiles of the devil we can come against those rulers we can come against those principalities we can come against those things in darkness those spiritual hosts of the wickedness that are in the heavenlies those two heavens that come against us that can go up high and they can see what we do before we do it in some cases depending on the authorities that they have but God says here in his words those wiles those acts those actions those deceits those tricks those in intended to ensnare us those ultimate acts of deception those things outside of our thoughts and outside of our 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 sight and our smell and outside of our our ears and outside of our touch those things that we have that that comes with those magical spells those enchanting things that sometimes fascinate us and we don't realize that it's demonic things those demons that come in sheep's clothing that try to take away our bravery our courage those things that come against us to try to stop us from serving God. But I'm here to tell you that you're stronger than that. And God says that I'll give you that. I've already given it to you. And that battle is already won. And I want you to know that that battle is won, already won. Because I want you to be a brave warrior for my son, Jesus Christ. We have a task to do. And that task is to bring others to Christ. So in, in my closing, I say that the apostles' fidelity was uh, the love that he had that comes by the word of truth. Yes, when you read this chapter, you'll find out about the belt of truth. You'll find out about your feet being shod. You'll find out about the breastplate. You'll find out about the preparation of the gospel of peace and the shield of faith. God says, have that faith. God says, trust him. He says, hold on to the power that you already have because of the Holy Ghost. And so I leave this with you today. Be a brave warrior for Christ. Be a faithful warrior for Christ. God bless you and God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. Maybe there's one person right now that hasn't accepted Christ as their personal savior. I'm here right now to tell you, ah, if I can give you a testimony, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, I was in the world. I was following those wilds. Yes, I was doing a lot of crazy things, but God saved me. And he can save you. It's a free salvation that he gives. And if you're one of those persons, just repeat after me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Nor, Lord, I, I no longer want to walk in the ways of those wilds that the devil creates and tries to force me to swallow. Lord, give me the strength that you gave your son 
to rise from the dead. That we are to follow and we are going to go the same way once we leave this earth. We'll be able to rise when we hear the first trumpet sound. And we'll be able to be in heaven with you. Lord, forgive me of my sins so I can be one of those ones. Take me as your son or your daughter and love me. And Lord, we ask that you do this in your son Jesus' name. And if you've prayed that prayer, you're saved. You're a Christian. And God wants to receive you. I ask that you find a church in your area that's preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you can't find a church, you can come to St. Paul Family Ministries. Our phone number is on the bottom of the screen. Just call that number and we'll tell you about baptism. We'll tell you about Jesus and how true and real and good he is. God bless you and God keep you and God make his face to shine upon you. Thank God. Change it! 